Hey folks, it's so Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Well, quite an exciting day for me today because you find me here in Watford where I've just jumped on this bike which is the brand new for 2021 Royal Enfield Meteor. Stick around, stay tuned. I'll tell you what I think of it. Okay, so the Meteor then, a bike that Royal Enfield announced probably about a year ago, I guess. I think it's been available in India for a while. Just becoming available now here in the UK. It's uh, a bike sort of follow on hot on the heels of the success of the Interceptor 650, but this is a smaller capacity machine. This is a 350 single cylinder machine. So perfect as maybe a first big bike, or if you're a commuter, this is the way that often these sorts of bikes are thought of. Although to be honest, it's quite a small market segment. It's almost in its own segment, but uh, I'm a massive fan of smaller capacity bikes and I'm a massive fan of lightweight bikes as well which uh, often people find ironic as a man that rides a BMW GS and a Honda Goldwing but I mean those bikes have their places but if you just want out and out fun then you cannot beat a lightweight motorcycle and that is what strikes me as I first jump on this this is very much my first ride review I've literally been on the bike two minutes and the first thing I noticed as I lifted it off the uh, side stand was how light it feels I'll go through the specs when we do the walk around in a minute but it's something like 175 kilograms but it feels really really light when you when you pick her up so excellent if that's something that's important to you the riding position on it is almost cruiser-esque in that you are sat bolt upright really really comfortable actually and your feet are not way forward like on a traditional cruiser but they're definitely more forward than you would get on say something like I don't know a Triumph Bonneville for example so if I look down hopefully you can see where my feet are they are, you know, I'm in a sort of an armchair position. Very, very comfortable. The seat on it is sort of sculpted to your backside. It's not a bench seat on here. We'll talk more about the seat when I show you it on the walk around. But it's plenty comfortable enough. And for me, at five foot eight, it feels quite roomy. Now these roads are really bumpy down here and horrible. And one thing I would say is the suspension does feel a little bit budget on it. But this is a budget bike. The whole motorcycle is less than four grand which is absolutely incredible for something that feels as good as this does. Because it feels really smooth. I was thinking Royal Enfield single, that's going to be a thumpy agricultural feeling thing like the old classic 500 was. But no, this feels great. It's been uh, designed at the Design Centre here in the UK. I think it's up at Bruntingthorpe Way, isn't it, in Leicestershire? And the uh, ex triumph engineers have worked their magic because this feels lovely and smooth. It's got a lovely note to it as well, out of the standard exhaust. It's just got a low rumble. I don't know if the uh, microphone's picking it up at all, but very, very nice. Gearbox is nice and snickable as well. Yeah, gearbox is really easy to use. Just going to try that clutch. Yeah, clutch feels nice and light as well. Yeah, this is a very nice bike to ride. There's not outrageous amounts of engine braking when you come off the throttle either, so it's uh, easy to ride. They've put a balancer shaft in the engine to smooth out vibes, and it really has worked well. I don't think I'm exaggerating to say this is probably the smoothest single I've ever ridden. Some of my other favourite singles are things like my old Honda CRF and the KTM 390 Duke. They're great singles as well, but this feels smoother than both those to me. But the noise it makes does still mean you've got that character. Oh, it's lovely and light. There's a sort of second bike for riding on a Sunday. This would be absolutely perfect. Now again, for a bike that costs so little, Royal Enfield have worked wonders on it because the uh, instrumentation on here is beautiful. They've got a classic analog speedo with some LCD bits and pieces in between, including a proper fuel gauge, I'm glad to say. But the thing that uh, I'm really impressed with is this, the uh, Royal Enfield Tripper device. It's like a little sat-nav that hooks up to the Royal Enfield app on your phone. I've got this hooked up to my phone at the moment. I'm not following it, but I just put on a local CAF to show what the presentation is like. It's, uh, it's a brilliant little thing. It's in colour. It's a little bit like the, um, the little sat-nav I, I have, which I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. It's just come round this roundabout turning circle is brilliant on here easy to ride yeah she soon runs out of puff in the lower gears but it is uh, 
Only a bike putting out something like 20 brake horsepower, as I say, I'll go through the spec in a second. But it doesn't feel slow by any means. It just feels really light and agile. Yeah, very unlike any Royal Enfield I've ridden before. From a handling and riding perspective, they're on to a winner. So yeah, back to this tripper. So you download a free app, the Royal Enfield app, and you pair your phone with it, and then it uses Google Maps to route you to wherever you want to go. So that means you don't have to mount your phone up on the handlebars and potentially damage your phone through vibrations or whatever. Not that this bike is vibrating. Uh, and you've got a really nice presentation and it's in colour, I like that. Apparently you're going to be able to retrofit these to other Royal Enfields as well in the future so if you've got a 650 Interceptor or a Himalayan I think you can get those fitted at a later date at some point. Yeah, gearbox is really nice on here. Mirrors on here, the big stalky Royal Enfield ones, same as you get on the uh, 650 I think. They work fine, no vibrations through them particularly. They look horrible though, don't they? Big Mickey Mouse jobs. I think I'll swap those out immediately for the uh, the slightly better, uh, I think they have some touring mirrors that you can get or get some aftermarket ones. But they work well though. I suppose they're in keeping with the look of the bike but they don't, uh, they don't do it for me. Brakes work really nicely on here. It's got the bi-brake calipers on here, which are the sort of uh, low-end Brembo ones if you like. Certainly seem good on the front, nothing behind me, let's just try the rear. Ah, uh, rear brake's alright. Listen to the engine note on here, it's fantastic. Brilliant fun. Oh yeah, chucking around little lanes like this. Absolutely brilliant, and you definitely don't need more power. If you're going to be blasting around the lanes on a Sunday, it's perfectly adequate. Switch gear on here I like actually, they've done something a bit retro with the switch gear. Which I think really works. They've got these little uh, dial affairs look, they look like they're Bakelite switch gear. They're easy to use, they're nice and uh, tactile as well. Quite like those. Not seen anything like that before. Yeah, great, uh, great that gearbox on here. Well, I hate doing uh, reviews where I have nothing bad to say, so let's go and have a look at the bike, talk through the spec. Maybe I can uh, find something for you then. It's great when she goes to idle. Listen to that, just thumping away. Sounds a lot more beefy than the 350cc would have you believe. Right, I see what it's like finding neutral easy as you like actually. That gearbox is great and what I'd like is they've got a sort of a heel and toe lever arrangement as well which is quite fun. Alright let's uh, get the stand down. Bizarre little stand. There we go and here she is. Now I think it's a, a pretty good looking bike. It's a great retro. What I don't like about it and this is when I said I don't like doing reviews where I say nothing negative. I don't like this rear seat arrangement. Now this particular seat is comfy but this back one, although the sissy bar I'm sure Mrs. Fly would appreciate, I just don't like the look of that. So if I had one of these, I would whip that off. But I think as a basis for customisation, this would make an excellent uh, bike. Anyway, let me get the other camera out and I'll talk you through the spec in the usual way. Okay, here we go. And uh, I think I've got the church bells ringing in the background. I don't know if you can hear that. Excellent. All right, let's have a look at this then. Here's that uh, engine I was talking to you about. Uh, it's actually 349cc, single cylinder, as I say, air cooled, as you can see. You don't get many of those these days, do you? Got that balancer shaft of uh, sort of equal out the vibrations. Works an absolute treat. And what I do like about it is they've finished it in this sort of black finish. And it looks really good. The quality of the build on this is absolutely up there with, you know, every other bike out there. This does not look like a, you know, a budget sub four grand bike. Incredible build quality on there, really like that. Anyway, uh, in terms of power, 220 horsepower. Yeah, all right, okay, I made a mistake. Straightforward slip of the tongue, 20.2 horsepower, right? Don't get your niggas in a twist, just a slip of the tongue. This puts out, uh, so it's not gonna win any races. If it was 220 horsepower, it would win plenty of races. But it's uh, ample power for going around the back lanes as I was just doing, or indeed commuting, whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's not going to win any races, but uh, it doesn't feel underpowered and the sort of riding I've, I would be doing on it. Torque wise, 19.9 foot pounds or 27 newton meters if you're new age. Um, let's have a look at the uh, brakes on here. So, on the front, it's got a single disc as you can see, and uh, it's got a blacked out 
Vibre uh, caliper on there. It's a two-pot caliper, and that uh, disc on there is 300 mil, and you can see the ABS ring on there as well. Works absolutely fine. No problem with the brakes. Uh, there's the rear brake, single pot uh, Vibre on there, and that's a 270 mil disc. Uh, again, two-channel um, ABS on here. Uh, Suspension-wise, non-adjustable on the front. It's got. Uh, a normal way up fork <laughs> for once. Uh, non adjustable 41mm forks on the front there, and then on the back here, twin shocks uh, which are adjustable for preload, I understand. Uh, but again, nothing nothing um, particularly uh, complicated about the suspension as you can imagine. That's one of the areas perhaps where they have cut corners. I love this rear light on here, it looks really good. Uh, what else? Seat height really low, 765mm, one of the lowest bikes that I've ridden on. So if you're vertically challenged, this bike is going to be uh, no problem for you whatsoever. The wet weight of this is 191 kilograms. That's what Royal Enfield quote. So I, I guess if you take the uh, the um, you know the fluids out, you look at it around 175 kilograms dry. Certainly feels very very light. Talking of the fluids, the tank on here, which is a lovely tank on here, nice teardrop shape, holds 15 litres. So uh, they reckon about 100 miles per gallon. So you're going to have a massive um, range on this. You're probably looking at 300 miles of range on the thing. So eminently practical. We're not really filling it off up very often. Electronics wise, well it's got that tripper navigation system that I told you about uh, and it's also got a little uh, USB port tucked under here which is quite handy so you could charge your phone up if you are going to carry that on a tank bag or something. Um, the, uh, what I do like on here while we're talking electronics is the lights, if I turn that on let me just show you the lights. It's got this sort of halo affair at the front. Now I don't think the lights are, uh, are LED but I do like this, this running light around there. Really nice, again looks really premium. And then I suppose the uh, other thing I must mention is the price of the bike. I've said it's sub 4,000. Comes in various flavours this. Uh, so it's £3,749 for the base version which is called the Fireball and that comes in yellow or red. All the versions are actually less than four grand. Uh, comes with a three year unlimited mileage warranty and roadside assistance so you've got some peace of mind there as well. It's actually available in seven different colours and three trim levels. Uh, I mentioned the Fireball. The Stella uh, has the backrest um, which I think this one must be because the Supernova comes with a windscreen tan seat uh, and the backrest and some other bits and pieces as well so you sort of choose your trim level accordingly or I guess you can uh, buy those bits and pieces and add them yourself anyway there are also 30 accessories available so you can sort of do a bit of a personalization job on it as well alrighty I think that's uh, probably it as far as uh, the spec is concerned let me just show you some more of the detail of the bike because this is the first time I've actually seen one of these in the flesh I'm very impressed with the fit and finish on the engine uh, I do like this uh, badge as well this is all done very nicely very very good single uh, exhaust coming out the side unlike the 650s that have twin exhausts but that does sound great uh, yeah very very nice what else to say oh, what about the tyres Centaur tyres I think that is uh, they seem fine but uh, maybe that's one of the things you'd want to replace with something a bit uh, a bit more mainstream I don't know but uh, yeah so for me lovely handling lovely riding bike not sure about the looks of that rear seat I think if you whipped that off that rear seat it would then be almost bobber-esque wouldn't it and look would look fab anyway let's jump on ride us some more so out of all the uh, all the meteors this is possibly my least favorite color they do as I said there are nine colors available and uh, some of them look really good so uh, obviously all a matter of personal taste gosh it does feel light when you get on it really comfy and light nothing about this so far that I don't like in terms of riding it uh, the, the little starter is great on here look we're in neutral so just do that and then you've got the great soundtrack and I'm loving the way this is all working as well Good job Royal Enfield, they've thought this through. I think they're on to another winner here, you know. If you can just get past the uh, looks of that rear seat arrangement. You are going to like the way this rides. What a hoot! So I must just take this opportunity to uh, thank the guys at Royal Enfield at Watford, at the bike den letting me borrow the bike as well and being one of the first to ride it if you do fancy one of these do go and check out the bike den if you end up buying one and you buy it from them uh, they are uh, going to be offering a TMF merch bundle as part of the deal so uh, if you buy from them and mention TMF merch you'll get yourself some uh, TMF t-shirts and bits and pieces thrown in too for free so uh, there's an incentive for you 
So there we are, that's my first impressions review of the new Meteor from Royal Enfield. As you gathered, I really like it. I didn't think I would necessarily like it because uh, the looks don't do it for me that much, I have to say. But as the basis for uh, customization, it would be brilliant. And then really the only thing I don't like about the looks is that uh, rear seat situation, which uh, you could probably just remove. But it rides a lot better than I anticipated. Uh, if you are interested in a light, fun bike for commuting or Sunday blast, do you know do yourself a favour and have a test ride on one of these. I think you're going to be surprised at what it's like to ride. So I'm hoping uh, at some point in the future I'll get the chance to maybe borrow one of these slightly longer term to bring you some more in-depth reviews of the Meteor. But uh, certainly after this first ride, it's all positive. Comfortable, sounds good, price is right, quality looks good, handling and lightness is brilliant. Top notch. Right, where's everybody going? Alright, that's it for this time then. Hope you enjoyed that. Look forward to speaking to you again soon. Until then, this has been the Mist and Fly. Cheerio.